In this video, uh, now that we have some views in our drawing, uh, I'm going to go over different types of dimensioning strategies uh, and things you want to consider when dimensioning. So what we've got here is our counterbore part, and we've got three views, the front view, the right view, and the bottom view. So as you can see, uh, we can, when we look at the side views compared to the, the main view here, uh, you can tell that we have counterboard holes just by seeing these dashed lines. And of course, we've got our cutout here at an angle. So we've got different things we need to do for dimensioning these part features. First thing I always do is I try to get the, the, the thickness, the width, and the overall length out of the way. And I do those generally on the side in the bottom view. So to start with dimensioning, you can just press the D on your, your keyboard, or you can go to the dimensions up here and click on dimension. And there's very a lot of different types of dimensions, but we, we're gonna do the D because that's sort of auto dimensions. It's, a, it's smart, it understands what we want to do. It'll do a lot of different things. Uh, and then we can get into particulars afterwards. So I'm going to click on uh, D for dimension on my keyboard. So this thing's caught up right now. There we go. And so I want to do the thickness. So I'm going to do that first. So all I got to do is click on this line. It knows it's 408 thousandths. And then click again. So I clicked, moved, and clicked again. And do the same thing on the side. I'm going to grab that entire line. I'm just hovering over it, and then I click once let go of the button, move over to the right, click again to place it. Now the dimension is placed. And the third one will be the uh, overall length. Now I could do that up here. I could do that down here, but I like to leave room for some of the main part features. So I usually get that out of the way by doing it down here at the end. So I'll go from, from this line. It doesn't seem to want to let me grab this entire line here. So I've got to do two clicks. One on this end, on this line, one on that line at the other end. Then let go, move down, and click to place. All right, so these dimensions are brought in from the pot model automatically that you've made. That's why you want to make it accurate because <clears throat> it's gonna. this is going to follow it. Um, when you make changes to your pot model, this kind of a, the, the, the drawing screen will prompt you to update the model update the uh, dimensions just so you know okay so now we got to look at what do we what do we need to do well we've got we've already got the length we don't have to worry about that we don't wanna, we got the width we don't have to worry about that right so no repeating dimensions but what we need to know is where these holes are located and from where all right where they're located and what's the edge we're going from well, let's say we're going from this end in this corner well that's pretty easy so all we got to do is go click on this from here and this is going to snap right to the middle of the hole. Click again, bring it up, and do that. <laughs> now we have a choice for the second location. It may be okay to locate it from the edge to here, or maybe the engineer wants to make sure we're going from here to here is the most important thing to do, so we'll do that. All right, so now we have them located on the X dimension, uh, X axis. Let's locate them now on the y-axis. So we'll go from here. What we need is the top is our datum, down to here, and that's okay. All right, so we've got our holes located. Uh, because there is no uh, dimension over here like this, this would end up the same thing. You don't need to double up on that in a drawing. You just need one. We want to keep it as uncluttered as possible. <coughs> okay. So uh, we have another part feature down here we want to make sure we're modeling, uh, dimensioning for the model, and that's uh, this angled cutout. So where is that cutout located and from what edge? We're going to use the same datum for our location of it. So I'm going to say it's dimensioned from this edge to the, the center of the angle right there. Okay. And... Then I'm going to give it a height up from here to here. 
right? So that's an important dimension maybe from here to here. And then we got to give it the angle. This angle from here to here is 90 degrees. And what about the angle of, from here to here? 135. All right, so that gives us the shape of everything and the location of the two holes. But the only thing we're missing is the hole information. So we can escape out of uh, dimensions and we can go to something else. Over here a little bit is hole and thread notes. It will automatically, if, as, long as, you, as long as you create your uh, part features correct in your model, it will automatically put all your numbers in for the through hole, the counter board diameter, and the counter board depth. So I'm going to click on that and then just click on the edge of this hole here. Go down a little bit, place my note here, click again, and there we go. Two times, diameter 310 through, that's this one. And then also counter board diameter is 487, that's this one, by 175 depth, which would be from here to here down to this view. And that's pretty much everything we need as far as dimensions on this. Um, click OK to get out of it. But under dimensions, there are a lot of different things we can do. Um, so we went over angular dimensions. Uh, diameter dimensions, those can, those can, that can be a useful one, but it will, usually will grab the diameters automatically, but if you had to, you could. Um, there's something called ordinate dimensions, which I'm going to go over right now. You've probably seen them, but you don't know what they're called. Let me get out of that. I'm going to get rid of all of these right here. All of these location dimensions. All right, including this one. And let's say I decide that all of my um, all my dimensions are coming from this upper corner here. Here's my datum. Well, this can simplify things like programming. If we do the ordinate dimension, what that does is you pick your origin. So let's say I pick this point and go up and click again. So that's my zero for the x-axis. Now all I got to do is keep picking my locations and all of these will be shown as a uh, direct measurement from the zero at the other end. So I'll even include the length in on it. All right. So that's kind of nice. And you can do the same thing here on the Y. Click and move, place it. It's, it's kind of a smart dimensioning system. It's pretty interesting. Um, do the same here for this. Get this one in here. And this is nice how you can kind of place them where you want to. And still it makes a little jog over. Okay, and then here. And then escape to get out of it. And I don't need this one. Never want to duplicate dimensions. All right, no matter what. Um, and so that's just a different way of doing some dimensioning. Uh, hope this helps. At least get, get you started on, on, uh, on doing some dimensionings with your drawing in Fusion 360.